Yeah, and joining us now for more insight on NVIDIA and the overall tech outlook is David Bonson, Chief Investment Officer at the Bonson Group. When you think about the NVIDIA story and how important it is to the market at this point, given the, the belief in AI to really lift all boats here, how important is it? Well, the math speaks for itself. It has been about 15% of the S&P's positive attribution this year. And the big seven stocks that everyone loves to talk about are over 100%. And so it's a significant attribution for cap-weighted index investors, which is to say most index investors. I would say that's an argument against indexing right now. It's really more or less become a significant play on a handful of stocks, NVIDIA obviously being one of them. Let's just take today as an example here. If you have the uh, the S&P down, but the Nasdaq more and the SOC semiconductor index down even more than that, how vulnerable are these stocks in this market? I don't think one day's action uh, speaks to any particular trend necessarily. I think that the overall performance attribution that we've seen for a whole year speaks to it. <clears throat> and by the way, you saw it in 2022 as well. It just happened to be to the negative side, that you got a greater downside because of the poor performance from some of the technology sector. Semis were a uh, part of it, but not as much as a part of it as they've been to the upside this year. I think that you have to look Look at the valuations here. Um, you more or less have an S&P 493 that takes out the NVIDIAs and some of these huge mega cap tech names that's trading roughly around 18 times earnings, maybe in some cases forward about 20. It's not cheap, but it's not absurd. But those seven companies are trading at 50 times earnings, NVIDIA being at 125. So there's good reason for a high valuation. They're fast-growing companies. Some might say this is a little ahead of its skis. Against that backdrop, David, what numbers do you think are going to get the most attention from NVIDIA investors tonight? Because if you look just at the straight-up year-over-year revenue story, we're obviously going to see a lot of growth. Because I don't believe it's trading off of fundamentals, I don't think it's trading off a particular revenue number that analysts want to see, I'm not sure that will be the most pertinent thing, but it will be some combination of data points that allows momentum to continue or not. This is a pure momentum play. It's very popular, and people believe that things that have just got done going up will continue going up. It's a very popular fallacy in investing, and so I think that's the primary driver of the stock. Ultimately, it probably probably going to hear something about forward guidance that's more important than a trailing three-month revenue number. And David, it's interesting that we get these results in a week where everybody's trying to figure out the future of open AI, which in many ways sparked the AI excitement this year, and yet that situation reminds us of how complicated things can be behind the scenes. So people see the AI promise and possibility and have shown a willingness to invest within it. But if you're looking at the landscape of publicly traded companies and trying to pick your spots right now, and you're concerned about valuations for companies like NVIDIA, how are you thinking about investing going forward. Well, my problem is I'm a child of the 1990s. I grew up investing in the dot-com boom. Uh, that was at least the beginning of my life as a professional investor. And so I'm scarred by the fact that sometimes the story can be right. The internet in a lot of ways was bigger than, the, than people believed in the 90s, but 96% of those companies still went away. The ones that made it obviously have done quite well, but you still had a NASDAQ drop 70%. I use the company Cisco as a great example to compare to NVIDIA now. Not that it will play out that way, but that it could play out that way. Cisco has performed so well over the last 25 years, it's not even funny, but it's at half of what its 1999 level was because it was just so preposterously overpriced by the end of that tech boom. That's the problem with NVIDIA is I don't know if one's buying into a Cisco 1999 price or not, regardless of how well the company's execution is over the next 20 years. Speaking of, how much more upside is there really, David, to NVIDIA given the run-up? What would investors have to see today in their results to keep buying given the valuations? 
they would have to just decide they want the momentum to continue. When a stock trades into a greater fool theory, the only thing that matters is if investors believe that other investors will believe it's still going higher. So I think that's what's primarily driving it is not that 125 times multiple can become 150 times multiple. It's a momentum trade that is really divorced from rational uh, analysis, in my opinion. Our thanks to David Bonson of the Bonson Group. Uh, nothing more to say of the, the magnificent seven there being vulnerable 